As you might know, I very recently actually managed to get floating panels landed on KD Plasma, so they will be in Plasma 5.25. At the same time, and seriously, at around the same time, I actually managed to get landed also the panel refactoring that I did, where I basically changed all of the code of the Plasma panels to make it more efficient and easier to actually understand and change later on. But doing these two things at the same time, I actually created so many bug reports about the Plasma panel and uh, just during the review uh, phase of uh, file, uh, Plasma 5.25. Uh, it will be released, if you don't know that, in a couple of weeks. And that means that within a couple of weeks, it should be ready and without bugs. And uh, there are a lot that were actually brought up by reviewers. So let me actually talk about that a bit. So this is my floating panel. And there are about the floating panel, there are actually two bugs that I already knew about when I actually click, uh, clicked on merge uh, floating panels. The first one is that in Wayland, we are not on Wayland, so here it looks right, but on Wayland, you still see a floating shadow into nothing that looks off and I would really like to get rid of it. However, um, I'm, I'm not sure how yet. I need to discuss that with Kwin developers. Uh, so that's one note, but one bug, sorry, that I already know about and currently I cannot do that much about it. I need to actually take the time to discuss with Kwin developers why the function that in theory should hide the shadows isn't. The second bug <laughs> that I already knew about when I merged uh, the floating panel is that on Wayland, use X if you want a more stable uh, um, session about floating panels apparently, but on, uh, on Wayland, if you're using floating panels and at the same time you're using scaling, you will see that the background underneath the panel, so all underneath here and on the right, is actually white for some reason. And I actually know the reason very well. So when you draw a panel, there is something that gets drawn uh, underneath the panel, which is called the contrast effect. This is like the fifth time I'm explaining the contrast effect. The contrast effect is basically a white rectangle with rounded corners that makes sure that A, you can always see what's on the panel even on very dark wallpapers. Uh, it, it is a white rectangle so it makes sure that uh, contrast is always there and of course it's whiter on dark backgrounds and it also takes color and makes them very saturated which means that if you got uh, like a red-ish wallpaper the contrast effect will make that super red and the transparent floating panel with blur on top of it will make sure that you do actually see that red in the panel uh, as a result of the blur, which looks pretty. So it's an important part of the design. Now, if you want to get rid of the bug, you just go into settings and disable contrast effect. Uh, I generally advise against it because it's part of the design of the plasma panels, but if it's a bug, then you can work around it by actually disabling contrast effect altogether. What's happening? Okay, so uh, in order to know where this uh, contrast effect should be applied, uh, the SVG of the panel has actually an element called an SVG element called the mask and the mask specifies uh, the position and size basically and so when the SVG is loaded and posi positioned in the screen you also get a mask that is in the same position and uh, the same size. What happens during scaling is that the mask gets actually scaled um, to be bigger than it should uh, because of scaling but it shouldn't actually get scaled. I I'm not sure why but it shouldn't. And by scaling it, it actually becomes bigger than it should. Um, imagine it as if we were applying scaling two times. So it is one and a half times bigger and then one, another one and a half times bigger. And of course it becomes bigger uh, compared to the panel. And the white rectangle is visible underneath and to the right of the panel. That's what's happening. These were the two bugs related to the floating panels. Uh, both, of them, <laughs> both of them are still there and both of them require some help from the KWIN team because they're very KWIN related stuff. With these 
too out of the way, there are also the bugs that pop up uh, about the panel itself, the refactoring. So first of all, I discovered that I had done a very stupid mistake. Let me see if I can actually bring this up. Panel refactoring layout manager here. So we've got this thingy here. Look at here. I wrote if the applet plugin name is plasma icon and middle equals current layout chilled at. Okay, what does this do? So first of all, it checks the name of the applet and it checks that it's a plasma icon. Plasma icons are the ones that you can actually add by right clicking an app and uh, clicking on uh, add to panel as widget this thing here, and then you can actually get rid of it then. So it checks for those kind of applets, and then it calculates the applet in the middle, and it assigns it to the variable middle, which will be later on used. So th that's easy. I thought this was pretty straightforward. It's not. Why? Because before my fix, I did not have this line, and it still looks correct, but middle now is not a declared variable, which means that when I attempt to put a value inside of it, I get an error because in uh, QML, I cannot give a value to anything that was not declared first. So I just had to literally add middle and the bug was gone. What was the bug? Well, whenever uh, there was an icon on the panel, the whole panel would just stop working entirely. You wouldn't just see it. And that's because after inserting the second element, well, there was this bug and uh, uh, an exception is raised here and everything that's next to this applet wouldn't even get processed because an, excep an exception stops uh, the for loop it's in. So that was a bug. Also, also uh, in theory, these applets should be added to the middle, which is why I'm checking for the middle element. However, what happens, uh, which I also fixed in the same uh, merge request, is that for some reason it was added as the first element instead of in the middle. Now, with in the middle, I meant to the left of the middle element, uh, which is the task manager, so it's here, but it was added to, to the left of even the application launcher, which was wrong. So what was happening? Uh, well, simply enough, I had swapped the order of the things. So this was up here and pretend that I didn't mess up the syntax. But what happens here is that if X and Y are positive coordinates, then you insert a plot there. Otherwise, I'll see if then you insert it at the middle. Issue the coordinates of the plasma icon item were zero, 00, which meant that they were actually added at zero, 00, which is top left. So that was wrong. And it was just a matter of actually changing the order of the elements. And that was as easy as that. Some things weren't as easy. And uh, luckily, even though some bug reports, uh, even though I've got exams, honestly, and uh, I'm also working on the promotion of uh, Plasma 5.25, so I don't have that much time to actually go around and fix bugs. I received help. I received help in actually uh, finding those bugs and uh, coming up with solutions by like Nate Fushan, I think it's pronounced. If it's not pronounced like that, sorry about that. There was also this issue that uh, when the panel is uh, not floating, I yeah, not floating, but adaptive, and then you maximize a window, you can see that it becomes opaque and all of the applets also become opaque. Whereas if it's, flo if it's uh, not maximized, it's actually transparent. You can see it that much, but it is. And the applets are also transparent. And there was this bug uh, that Nate uh, right, <laughs> like brought up to me uh, because I hadn't even noticed the bug report, which was that the opposite was happening. And <laughs> that was weird. So when the panel was transparent, the applets were opaque. When the panel was opaque, the applets were transparent. And thankfully, I managed to fix that also within uh, 10 minutes. This one is um, in the other session, this one. Okay. It is, it was, um, uh, I, I'm actually missing right here. So what's the issue? Well, what I was doing is uh, in here, I'm checking whether the panel should be transparent based on various things like is it floating is the screen covered uh, did uh, is the setting set to adaptive or is it peak all of these things and uh, uh, you can see that I'm setting this variable to be one if she, if it, it should be opaque and zero if it shouldn't 
And what I was doing then in this if, this is the if that actually tells Applet whether they should be transparent or not. And what I was doing is I was doing big, um, sorry, panel opacity equals one. Okay, so if panel opacity is one, then also the applets should be opaque. If it's zero, then they shouldn't. Straightforward, right? Uh, well, it's wrong. Why? Because yes, I am setting this as an example. I am setting this to one just before actually checking for this value. So you would say that if I set it here to one, then it becomes one. It doesn't because this panel opacity is a property that has uh, that have a behavior on this, which is a number animation, which means that it actually animates from one value to another which means that if I take this variable and it's zero and I set it to one, it actually takes uh, around a second for it to actually get to one because there's the whole animation from zero to one, which means that in here, if I set it to one, and then immediately check for the value, well, I didn't have enough time yet to actually change the value from zero to one, the animation wasn't complete. So this still read at zero even though I had just set it at one. And this means that it was actually taking the starting value and not the end value of the animation. How did I fix this? Well, I just created a new property called opaque applets, which is just false or true. And I set it to true when the applets should be opaque. And this one is not animated, which means that if I set it to true here, it still stays true here. It doesn't do any weird animation things. Now it's fixed. This set. There are still bugs about uh, the panel. Hopefully uh, they will be fixed by 5.25's release, obviously. And uh, I don't know how much time I personally will be able to go there and fix bugs to merge requests because I've got so many things to do, honestly. I've got exams, but I'm also going uh, from Friday to Sunday to uh, Florence to a Python conference. I hold a talk uh, at a Python conference conference, but I also organized uh, Easter egg there and uh, more because I also need to prepare everything for uh, the Plasma 5.5 release uh, for promo from a promotion point of view. So, so many things and try my best. Uh, luckily, I've got people to help me. So hopefully this will go for the best. I just showcased the bugs that were reported to me that I actually managed to to fix myself, to talk about the th uh, things that I personally did to make sure that it actually worked in the, it actually works in the final release. So thanks for following along.